Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making the second design in the Heirloom Lace 2022 collection. It's another angel. She's bigger, she's full, and she's super cute. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. Because I have such a long length of this lace, I'm going to be generous and I have cut off about 30 inches. This is five inches wide. And because it's a little bit wider, I'm going to use my 25 millimeter face. I'll, I'll do three lengths of this tool, this six inch tool, which will provide a sort of like, um, I call it the slip of her dress. It makes the skirt stand out a little bit. So I've cut three lengths of this. I'm gonna fold it in half. I just want to make sure that it's longer, when it's folded in half, that it's longer than the dress lace. So I'm going to tie it off in the center with a 1 16th inch wide satin ribbon. I know you've seen me do this many times if you've been watching my videos. And I thank you for your response. I, I can see that what you really like is these vintage lace angels. And so I'm giving you more. And um, it's my pleasure because I love making angels and especially with vintage lace. So I'm gonna thread these ribbons through the neck, through the head, from the bottom to the top. Pull it through. I want this tool to fill that hole in the bead. Then I'll back it off and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right here like that and then I'll slide this on making sure that the front the face is opposite that glue then I'll tie this off this really doesn't do much good it's just kind of I've gotten in the habit of doing that <laughs> and then I'm going to tie it off up here so that it will become the hanging loop. There we go. Now I'll take this and I'll fold it right sides together. Sometimes it's hard to tell the right side. Let's see. Okay, this is right sides together. And then I'm gonna sew this up with a quarter inch seam allowance on my sewing machine. And this will become the back center seam. Now I'll turn this right side out and with a double strand of quilting thread, I'm going to gather up the top edge all the way around. Just a running stitch in and out, in and out, in and out like this. There we go, I'm back to where I started. So before I pull it up too tight, I'm going to put her head through and gather this around her neck with the seam in the back. I'm gonna to try to get the fullness distributed evenly so that she has the same number of gathers all the way around, like left and right, front and back. That looks good. And then I will wrap and stitch through to secure. So I'll wrap it, sometimes I'll wrap it a few times, and then I'm gonna stitch through. So I'll stitch through a couple of times and then I'll secure the thread in the back, back here. Now I'll trim this extra tool and we'll have a look. Because her dress had so much length to it, width, I don't know, 
Um, she's got a lovely full dress and a nice sort of a bell shape, which I really like. It was a little bit extravagant, but I wanted it to look good, right? So next we're going to do a little collar. I'm gonna use this lace again. It's the same lace that I used in the first project from this series. I'm gonna cut off about 15 inches, maybe 18, 18 inches. And again, I'm just gonna gather this up with a needle and a double strand of quilting thread. So I'll start by folding back the edge, the end, one end of the lace and secure the thread like that all the way through and then I'll just do a running stitch through the header. I really like this collar lace and I have quite a bit of it so that makes me very happy. We'll see how long I can get it to last. So there's my little gathered lace collar, and I'm going to place that around her neck with the ends in the back and stitch the ends together. I like to pull this nice and tight so that her neck doesn't get too thick. I think that looks good. And then here's a pro tip from Ruby, and that is to go ahead and add more of the ruffles to the sides and less to the front and back, because we're going to be sewing a little decoration here, and we don't want it to get all kind of caught up in all the ruffles. And then when the ruffles go up on the sides, it just looks kind of cute. Although sometimes the hair kind of fills in all the space and it's not that easy to distinguish from the hair. But anyway, now I'm gonna add a little decoration here and I have lots of options. Um, this is cute, I like that. I have these little sort of cabochons and I have buttons of course and even this little this is super cute. It's um, sort of an aqua faceted heart. I'm not sure if my needle will get through there. Oh yeah, it's gonna get through, so that is an option. And then I also have this little beaded flower, which is kind of what I think I want to use. It's, um, it's like a little five petaled flower that is strung onto wire and made in, can you see it? Anyway, it's super cute. I think I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna twist these together nice and tight up here next to the flower and then cut off the extra wire. I'm gonna cut off this extra wire and then just sort of like twist it and press it down into the center. I think I can just glue this. No, I should sew it. All right, I'm just gonna do maybe one stitch. Just sort of across the center of the flower. And then I'll probably add a little bit of glue also. What do you think? Do you like the flower? I do like it. So I'm gonna secure my thread in the back and add a little bit of glue. I'll lift this up and add a touch of glue right into the underneath in the center. That looks good. I'm gonna add a couple of ribbon streamers right here. I'm not gonna tie a full bow. I just want a couple of streamers, I think full bow would be a little bit too busy. So I just folded this ribbon in half and then I'm just going to place the fold underneath the collar. Okay, now for her hair. I have my favorite yarn and it's pretty thin. So I'm gonna wrap it, I think at least eight times, maybe 10. 
One, two, three, five, six, seven. Oh, I think eight is enough. Okay. Wrap around the center. I'm actually spreading my fingers out a little bit farther to make sure that those loops are long enough for my larger bead. I'll measure this for you. Let's see. It's almost three inches across, maybe two and three quarters. So I leave a nice long streamer, hold it with these two fingers, spread my fingers apart, these two, and wrap it eight times in a figure eight. One, wait, okay, let me start over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I leave another long streamer. And then I take the top streamer and wrap it around the center. And then I'm gonna tie it off by picking up the first streamer and tying two overhand knots, so a square knot right in the center of the figure eight bundle. And of course, the <laughs> a little bit better instructions will be in my Ruby's hair technique video. So I have two bundles, uh, each one wrapped eight times with this particular yarn. You can use any yarn. It doesn't have to be this exact yarn, but I will give you the details on this yarn in the supply list. So I'll start by covering the back of the head. I'm gonna squeeze out some glue, covering the back of the head pretty thoroughly, and then I'm gonna press the yarn into the glue. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be covered with um, with the wings later on, so it doesn't have to be totally neat and perfect. But the front, I do try to get it pretty neat. I'm gonna, first, I'm gonna start by squeezing out some glue right here in front of this ribbon loop. And then I'm gonna squeeze out some glue along here, just a straight line down the side like that, and then I'm going to twist this toward the back. Oh, I got a piece of red thread in there. Not too surprised about that. And I'm going to press that twisted section into the glue on the side of her head. That looks like a good length. And then I'll repeat for this side. So a line of glue along the side of her head, twist this bundle toward the back and press it into the glue. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more glue to secure that. It's a little bit more. That looks better. Great. Okay, now let's add her halo. I think about three inches is the right length. So let's see. Okay, so I've cut a three inch length of 20 gauge gold wire. If I accidentally say 20 millimeter, I hope you know that I mean 20 gauge. And I shaped it into a sort of a U shape by wrapping it around my thimble. You could do a spool of thread or even the wire spool, however you like. Then I'll add a drop of glue to each end. And then I'm gonna press those wire ends into the sides of the head, into the hair but more so that the ends of the wire are toward, are toward the back and they'll be concealed by the wings. Here, let me make sure you can see that. See how the end is way in the back. Now let's see our wing options. I've already cut out several options for wings and I'm not sure. This one has birds on it. That's pretty. Or maybe this one. Kind of like this one because it sort of picks up that gold in the middle of the bead flower. So I think I'll use this one. 
This is um, scrapbooking paper from this collection. I think it's, is it this one? Yeah. And this is Kathy Holden Flea Market Finds Neutrals Palette. And this is just paper. It's not really cardstock. So I spray glued it to some cardstock and then I cut it out with my die cutting machine. It is about four and a quarter inches across. And the directions for this you can find in my Focus on Wings video. But I just wanna say that if you don't have a die cutting machine and don't really wanna do this or don't like it or whatever, you can always use a CD and just trace and cut a circle. And then you can zigzag, do a decorative stitch, use um, scalloping shears or pinking shears, or there's lots of options. I'm gonna squeeze out a little circle of glue right here at the top center, right by the fold. And then I'm gonna press the back of her head into the glue and I really want that to be secure looks like this in the back and like this in the front you can see how that skirt the dress is nice and full and we are done I just before I go I want to show you a comparison between the first angel and the second angel this one's just a little bit bigger, a little bit fuller with her lace. It's very full and floppy. And this one is a little more compact. Um, the wings are smaller, the bead is smaller. Everything's a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger on this one. But of course the technique is the same. You can make this. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.